Greetings. So this is a little video about the bend command in Wing 3D and specifically to try and answer some points asked by uh, Smarine on the ODF forum. And by the way, my apologies because I'm pretty sure that I've already mispronounced your name with my awful accent. Sorry about that. So anyway, let's get started. And from a simple cube, let's extend it a bit vertically to have a <coughs> sort of a shaft form. Select an edge, hit G on the keyboard to get an edge ring. Selection and let's cut it in, would be generous, at least 20 segments. And hit C to connect. Okay, that part is pretty straightforward. So now we initiate the bend command in vertex mode, always. And when we do, Wings is waiting for some parameters. Okay, first, uh, a little warning about terminology here. Uh, rod center, uh, what is the rod for the bend command? It's not the actual geometry. Huh? It can be a bit misleading, perhaps, because uh, we have here a kind of a rod as a mesh. But the rod actually stands for the invisible handle, if you want, of the modifier, of the bend modifier. Okay, in other software you have such visible, usually, handles uh, or bonding box, which appears when you start uh, adding modifiers. Not in wings. Okay, it's not its philosophy. So anyway, the rod center. The rod center, the important point, I think, is to remember that it's part of the modified geometry here that we not actually bend at all. It's not necessarily the center of our bend, okay, because I could put it here or uh, here or at the bottom. And if I do that, let's select a face, for example, for my rock rod center, this face will absolutely uh, stay uh, stick to the, to the grid here. It will not bend at all. Okay, because its points are setting on the same plane of the rod center. I could select a point, an edge, whatever, or even an element on, an, on another object. Uh, for example, I could select my rod center here. And even so, we will uh, deform our initial selection. Okay my rod center of my invisible under, as I said, is here, which is pretty stupid, but it's just to illustrate that Wings doesn't restrain you uh, when selecting, uh, when making secondary selection, two elements of the deformed geometry as uh, input parameters. So anyway, let's select, as I said, this bottom face for my rod center. Right click to get to the, to the next step. <coughs> and now Wings is waiting for the rod top. So I often, I see people selecting, for example, rod center as one point, which I often do too. And for picking the rod top, uh, just another point in the very next section. It's not my preference, but it, it has advantages and disadvantages. I'll explain why. So let's do that. What's actually important to remember here, since I've selected, remember, a face here when I picked my rod center, is that rod top and rod center uh, have to be perfectly aligned vertically here, actually for what I want to do, to get a regular bend and not a bend which will twist in more than one axis. Okay, so since I can't select a face as I did once, and I want my pin dot to be in the center of my geometry, simple trick, I just hit L, edge loop selection, and wings uh, will always place my secondary selection uh, between uh, the different elements. Okay, so for example, you can see the pink dot is always moving to get in the virtual center of my temporary selection. So as I said, let's pick it here so that it's perfectly aligned vertically with my uh, previous rod center. Next step, so right click. Uh, bend normal, the direction of the bend, so let's pick a face and you can see my vector here and uh, right click execute, okay, we have a clean proper bend, meaning in only one axis 
to my band number. So about S9 question, uh, how to get the right angle. Let's get to that. Let's align my view in auto mode to uh, to X, for example. You can see on the upper left of my window, as I'm dragging my mouse, you can see the angle display being uh, slowly updated. It's changing very uh, slightly, very uh, in very uh, small increments. Even so, uh, I'm moving my mouse like a madman. So if I wanted to make a 90 degree bend of my geometry, like this, you can see I have a 4.48 angle, which is, which might be a bit confusing at first. Uh, it's actually logical because remember when I picked my rod top here, then my rod center here, the displayed angle while doing a, a bend dragging is uh, the difference between the, the planes of the rod center and rod top. And since they are very close here, uh, we have only a four, four, five degree angle, which seems about right between this this face or this loop, if you want, of my initial rod center, and this one. Okay. Once we get that, if you want to do to have this result, and we want to have a precise 90 degrees and not just uh, eyeballed as I did here of our geometry. Let's undo that. We can work properly. So let's do it again. Rod center. This time, uh, look, I could pick again the bottom face. Rod top. And this time, I'll pick the top face okay, of the geometry. And when I pick the bend normal, let's align the view to X. Let's use with Shift key hold down the constraint to get uh, 15 angles increments. You can see on uh, the top left that the <coughs> 90 degrees correspond perfectly to a 90 degrees change in my geometry. Because uh, it's calculated, évidemment. Uh, it's it's a compute between the rod center and the rod top. Okay? And as I said, the rod center isn't bent at all. Okay, so if you have uh, further questions, uh, see you on the forum.